All right, so today I'm gonna to be changing the oil on a 1993 Honda Civic. Now, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just talk a little bit about oil. Uh, I'm not gonna to pretend to be an oil expert because I'm really not. Um, but it is kind of important that you know a lot of people just generally put 530 in their car and it, it's not a terrible thing to do, it really isn't. Um, but uh, the factory does have specifications on what oil the, the car prefers. Um, most newer Hondas and stuff, you're gonna see Z, 020. I think most newer cars in general, you're gonna see 020. Uh, 520 on a little bit older Hondas and then the ones that are uh, over a decade old, usually you're gonna see about, uh, or you know, almost two decades old, you're gonna see uh, 530. Uh, I'd really just recommend whatever the factory recommends. Now, if we're talking oil brand, uh, from everything that I've heard from, uh, you know, honestly, most of the, the oil information I've gotten about uh, what oil is good, be you know, best, uh, has come from AMS oil guys and uh, if you're familiar with uh, racing or anything like that AMS oil is a great engine oil um, now it's usually it, it's sold by dealers and that's usually who, who you're learning the information from so it, it can be kind of biased but uh, what I've gained for most of it is that most of this oil that you get at the stores it's just about the same stuff it's not really uh, any different any worse you're not going to um, you're not going to hurt anything by getting a different brand, uh, at least in my experience, and it sounds like from their experience too. I, you know, I wouldn't go ahead and get uh, like an O'Reilly's brand or uh, Advanced Auto or what, whatever it is, you know, just a store brand because what you're paying for whenever you buy oil is its ability, usually, to go from 10 to 30, 10 to 30, 10 to 30, 10 to 30, and uh, meaning a 10 weight oil to a 30 weight oil. And over time, that ability wears out, and you actually it loses the ability to do that, and you'll be stuck with either uh, after running it in the engine for a while, you'll be stuck with either a 10 weight or a 30 weight. I can't remember which one it usually sticks with, but it does tend to just stop changing its viscosity. So, um, you, you definitely want to, you know, you don't want to buy just uh, store oil unless you're just leaking it and profusely, and you need to get from point A to point B real quick, but. Um, I wouldn't run it in my car if I was just if I just rebuilt an engine and was trying to get the most out of the engine. I definitely wouldn't do that. But uh, if you're not buying AMS oil or anything like that, supposedly all this stuff is the exact same, really. So uh, just get some oil that has a nice label and and uh, says it'll help your car and whatnot because they pretty much all do. Um, and uh, pop it in your car and run it. Now for oil filters. Um, Usually the go-to is like, I got my oil at Walmart because it was five bucks cheaper than the parts store. Uh, but they didn't have a Wix filter at Walmart, so I didn't buy a filter there. All they have is Fram. It almost looks like they have like a Fram deal there because it's just Fram everywhere. Um, from my experience and everything that I've heard, uh, Fram just doesn't, it doesn't have the, uh, the filtration that most other filters have. Now for Hondas, I highly recommend the Honda brand filter. It's the same as a Wix, same price. Um, and everything, even with the crush washer that's supposed to be replaced on the drain bolt, it's the same exact price as a Wix. Uh, so you're getting uh, OEM quality for the same price as aftermarket, which is awesome. But uh, Fram in general, just everything that I've heard and seen, it's just not a great filter. The only the only upside to it is that it's usually textured, so it's easier to take off. That's really the only uh, advantage Fram has on anything. Um, now maybe I think there are, you know, different steps up from Fram, like, you know, I, I can't, this may not be exactly it, but, you know, like a Fram Gold or something like that. Uh, there may be diff better versions, but generally if you just go get a Fram, it's not going to be a great filter. Um, and it's definitely one you want to change every oil change. Um, oil filters can sometimes go multiple oil changes without needing to be changed. I wouldn't go multiple oil changes on a Fram. Uh, one is just enough. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this oil change. Now, first thing you wanna do is uh, go ahead and start your car up and run it for a little bit and just get the uh, oil inside there uh, decently warm so it, it uh, runs out of the engine much faster. It won't be like molasses trying to pour out of there. It'll just, you bust that drain bolt loose and it's like water coming out of there. So you wanna have it a little bit warm. 
you don't have a scorching hot so you give yourself burns but you just want to lighten that oil up a bit so after you have it warmed up you want to take this oil cap off oh my gosh so I'm gonna go get a tool to remove that but you want to go ahead and remove your oil cap and uh, and uh, set it right here on the hood latch so that you do not forget it because a lot of times what people will do is they uh, will drain the oil they put the drain bolt in and then they just close the hood because that's on there they just close the hood and start it up without oil and that's not what you want to do you want to take every measure possible to make sure that you do not forget to put oil in this so it doesn't run dry and as you can see on my oil cap right here to keep myself from being able to shut the hood and drive off with uh, out oil in it um, you can see inside here this is just you know inside your valve cover you can see where some oil is um, now you want to use if you jack the car up you want to put some jack stands on it uh, to hold it up so it doesn't fall on you I am using ramps I don't recommend my method right here I'm using ramps on a sloped driveway so not the best method but it's uh, it's working if you do this you definitely want to chalk the back wheels like I don't have done but I have the handbrake up and I have it first I don't think it's going anywhere but um, there's always that risk so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get underneath it with a drain pan and break the drain bolt loose to uh, go ahead and get that oil draining now as you can see I'm under my car um, this is on the driver's side of the car you can see right here we have the oil pan and this is the drain bolt right here and what you want to do is get a socket that fits and I believe it is a 17 millimeter yes it is the 17 millimeter socket and you get your drain pan ready and you want to break this loose it may be pretty tight especially if it's warm or not pretty tight but it should be a little bit tight at least if this is warm and uh, you want to break this loose and get this ready to slide underneath here so let's go ahead and see if we can break it out loose right there I hit my elbow and everything underneath here and you can see also this thing has a plug in it I went ahead and pulled that plug up and we're just gonna loosen this bolt here and now I can see it's kind of loose I'm gonna try to get my hand out of the way of it and it should come pouring out of here there it is Also, you want to pop this off here if it has that, because else it won't be able to bleed the, uh, the air out of here. The uh, container needs to breathe to be able to uh, properly get oil in and out of it. So, so I'm just going to let this drain for a while. You can see how it's running out very easily. Um, if it were cold, it would not be coming out this easy. You, I'd have to sit here much longer. So this shouldn't take much time. I'm just going to uh, let this do its thing for a while, though and uh, then we'll put the drain bolt back in and remove the oil filter and now you can see this is just dripping um, now I still want this under here because I'm still trying to drain it all be sure it's all out of there but I want to be able to slide them here and show you uh, what you do is uh, you, re you reach your hand up around the axle here and uh, you just grab that oil filter and turn it counterclockwise now it can be a pain because sometimes people who change oil uh, they way over tighten it you honestly don't need it very tight um, it's a rubber gasket it seals just fine without being cranked down all the way it has pretty fine threads so it's able to hold on there pretty well um, so you should just be able to reach up there and grab it by hand. If not, you may have to get some channel lock pliers or something like that and grab onto it and turn it. Uh, best option, obviously, as you can see, the top of the filter has a, uh, a, a shape on it with sides and everything, and there's a socket that's meant to go on there. So you can get a socket that fits right on there and will uh, and, uh, we'll remove that right off there. But if you don't, you can just use your hand and remove it. So, All right, now, if you're changing oil on Hondas, uh, the best option is obviously there's a, a crush washer that goes around the drain bolt you can see that right here that I just dropped 
and what it does is just a piece of aluminum that essentially you tighten the bolt down you can feel it crush and that means it's seated and sealing oil from leaking out of the, the hole. So what you want to do to replace that is sometimes you can just grab it and pull it off there. If it has not been removed in a while what you can do is grab a, a decent set of pliers, uh, put them down to like the size of the, the drain bolt washer and you just grab the side of the washer and you crush it as much as you can just to get a good grip on it and then you get a uh, ratchet or something and you just remove it off of there. Now for some reason someone put pipe, uh, what's it called, I don't even know, some sort of thread tape on mine. I'm not sure why that was but then you just take your new washer, you set it on there and you go ahead and thread this back in and you'll tighten this on there and you'll feel it sort of get tighter, get snug, and you'll feel it slip and stop. And once you feel that slip and stop happen, that's whenever this washer is seated and you don't need to be cranking on it anymore, especially if you have an aluminum pan because you can pull the threads right out of that pan by over tightening it. So this new washer is also a good way to make sure you don't over torque your, your uh, drain bolt, but it's also a good way to make sure that your uh, bolt is properly sealed to the pan. So you can see I'm back here with my drain bolt and crush washer. I'm going to go ahead and thread this back in by hand. By hand is very important. Uh, you don't want to cross thread this. A new pan probably costing somewhere around $300. I have no idea, but it's probably a good assumption on how much it would cost. So now this is just a little bit sealed against there. I'm going to grab my ratchet. And there's only about a drop sitting there hanging there. So. The drop falls, I'm not too concerned. Uh, my ratchet on tighten. You can feel this tighten. And it slipped. Right there. So, right now it's good and snug and crushed on there as much as it needs to be. Doesn't need to be any more than that. Uh, people like to crank on these a lot. Similar to the oil filters, you don't really need to tighten them crazy amount, but you want to make sure they're not coming off there. So. Uh, next, I'm going to be removing the oil filter. So you can see the oil filter here, and what's going to happen is I'm going to pull this off, and it's going to start running down the back of the block. Uh, you want to be in a position where you can slide this pan under here quickly. Right now, I have the pan kind of out of the way, so I can reach my hand up here. And you can see it's turning pretty easily, and that's because it was tightened the way it's supposed to be. A lot of times, it's not. Um, so it's pretty loose right now, now that I've turned it. I'm going to go ahead and get this in position and try to reach up there and get it loose enough to start draining some oil out. And right there it is. So you can see that there. I got my pan catching it all. And you just want to let that drain for a little bit so you don't pull that filter off and just be covered completely in oil. And after that is drained, you can just simply take your oil filter, set it right here. Actually, it says drain filter here. So you can set your filter right there because it matters. And uh, Go ahead and just let all the oil drain out of it into your pan. And uh, what you want to do with your new filter is take the plastic off it. And what I usually do, I usually just set it down or something, get a little bit of oil. People usually say new oil, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just get some oil on there. The, the point of this is to keep the seal from rolling and pinching and tearing. From the friction of it turning against the block so you just want to go ahead and lubricate this o-ring and uh, go ahead and screw it back on up there and you don't need to crank on this thing because this this o-ring here does a great job of sealing it on its own now i have the new filter on there i went ahead and probably tightened it i don't know maybe like a turn and a half actually um if even that passed snug against the block so 
like I said, it's just about making sure it's sealed. It's not, it doesn't need to be crazy tight, but uh, with how fine those threads are, there's not really a good chance it's gonna be coming off there. So you just wanna tighten it down and not make it ridiculous for yourself next time you come to do this. Now, if you were on jack stands at this point, what you'd wanna do, since you have the drain bolt tightened and you have the oil filter tightened, what you wanna do is go ahead and jack it up, remove the jack stands and put it down on the ground in a level area. Now I do not, so what I'm gonna do is put I'd say probably about three quarts. I think this engine takes three and a half, maybe four uh, quarts. We'll see, but I'm going to go ahead and pour three quarts in here. And then I'm going to start it up, roll it backwards, and um, get it on a level ground, and then check the oil and add oil as needed. As you can see, I have this ginormous funnel here. It's the only one I could find. Use, use, use that to pour the oil in. Uh, put about three quarts in it. I'm going to head in roll it backwards uh, and put it onto a level ground so I can be sure I have the correct amount of oil in it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, put it back probably down there in the street somewhere, make sure it's level and uh, check it again. Also something you want to do is uh, go under here with a rag and just start cleaning off all the spilled oil from the oil filter usually is where most of it comes from honestly. Uh, so you just want to get all that off there so you're not pulling into your driveway and leaving big oil spots everywhere from it leaking residual. So, uh, yeah. All right, now it's also important that you do start it up first, especially if you change the filter, um, so that the filter gets filled back up with oil and you get to know how much w uh, went to the filter minus what you put in there. So uh, it's important that the filter gets filled up and then you check the oil so that you don't, you're not low any. So what I'm going to do is get a rag that I do not have in here, or maybe I do, I used to put one down here. No. So you want to get a rag and uh, go ahead and get your dipstick out and uh, clean it off the first time you pulled out and then put it back in and check it and I'll show you how to check that. So by putting three quarts in it with a new filter, uh, you can see it's about halfway in between the full line and the, uh, the low line. Usually, in between those dots is a quart, um, so it makes sense that I assumed it'd take three and a half, and uh, three put it a half a quart low, so I'm going to go ahead and put that other half a quart in there, and then uh, we'll call it good. So now, uh, I've filled it with another half a quart, about. I'm going to go ahead and check it. And it is right on the full line. You can tell. I'm trying to focus it. It's such a difficult thing to focus on, especially with me shaking like a leaf. But it is right on the full line. So we're going to call that good. Put our stick back down in there. Put our cap back where it's supposed to be. And then uh, that's how you change oil on a Civic. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, leave a like, that'd be awesome. Uh, if not, leave a comment, let me know what you had a question about, or uh, tell me I'm stupid or something, that, that'd be great too. Just let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.